This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. So this is a new chapter. In this particular chapter, we are going to discuss about work, energy and power. You all uh, know the common terms that we use in our day-to-day -day life like work, energy as well as power, isn't it? So our next chapter name itself is uh, work, energy and power. So in this particular chapter, we are going to discuss many concepts like um, the first part is introductory part. And the second part is notions of work and kinetic energy. In that, we are going to study about the work energy theorem. In the third part, that is, we will study about work, then kinetic energy, work done by a variable force, the work energy theorem for a variable force, and even we will study about the concept of potential energy. The conservation of mechanical energy, the potential energy of a spring, and even we will study about uh, the various forms of energy in that uh, the law of conservation of energy. And uh, in the end part, we will see what is this power and collisions. So, these are all the topics that we are going to discuss in this particular chapter. So let's begin our introductory part. So the terms work, energy and power. As I told you before, these are, uh, you know, we use these terms in our day-to-day -day life, every day. A former plying the field, a construction worker carrying the bricks, a student studying for a competitive examination, an artist painting a beautiful landscape. All these are different forms of work, isn't it? We consider all these as working, isn't it? In physics, however, the word work covers a definite and precise meaning. Whatever I told you now, it's just a general meaning. But in coming to the physics, the work, it has a definite and precise meaning. Somebody who has the capacity to work for 14 to 16 hours a day is said to have a large stamina or energy, isn't it? If I say I'm, I can work for 16 hours a day, then it's like I have more stamina and energy, isn't it? So here comes the concept of energy. So we admire a long distance runner for her stamina or energy. And energy is thus a capacity to do work. So in short, we can say energy is a capacity. To do work okay Energy is nothing but a capacity to do any kind of work. Okay. In physics, the term energy is related to work in this sense. But as said before, the term work itself is defined much more precisely. See, the word power is used in everyday life with different shades of meaning, isn't it? Uh, for example, in karate or boxing, we talk of powerful punches, isn't it? Uh, what a punch it was. It was very powerful. We say those words, isn't it? So, these are delivered at a greater speed. This shade of meaning is close to the meaning of the word power which is used in physics. So, we can see that there is a loose correlation between the terms 
okay in our minds that generate in our minds so in this particular chapter we are going to study about all these uh, work energy and power in detail and you'll you know you'll come to know the difference between all these three and how they are used and where we use all these terms okay so first we need to develop some mathematical prerequisite before studying all these concepts so first we'll study what is the scalar product of two vectors okay the scalar product we know about vectors isn't it vectors are the quantities which have both direction and magnitude and scalars are the quantity which have only direction which have only magnitude without any direction isn't it so we already know how these vectors are added subtracted so now let's see how this scalar product works so there are two ways of multiplying vectors usually so the first one is known as it is known as scalar product the first one in that there are two ways for multiplying the vectors the first one is the scalar product which uh, gives only the scalar form of two vectors and the other one is known as vector product okay when we multiply any two vectors it will generate two time kinds of terms one is the scalar product and the another one is vector product so the scalar product or dot product of any two vectors a and b is denoted as a dot b okay and we can write a dot b as a b cos theta so where theta is the angle between the two vectors as you can see in the figure here see this is the theta the angle between two vectors a and b since a b and cos theta are scalars the dot product of a and b is also a scalar quantity and each vector a and b has a direction but their scalar product does not have any direction so if you individually consider vector a and vector b then they have direction but when you consider the scalar product of these two then that that product is not having any direction okay and we can also write a dot b as a b cos theta or in other words we can write it as b a cos theta okay so b cos theta is the projection of b onto a you can see that in this figure so this b cos theta is the projection of b onto a okay and a cos theta yes a cos theta is the projection of a on the vector b so a dot b is the product of the magnitude of a and the component of b along a okay if you consider a dot b then it is the product of magnitude of a and it is b cos theta that is nothing but the component of b along a alternatively we can say it is the product of the magnitude of b as well as component a cos theta 
of A on vector B. Okay, so we can write the scalar product satisfies the commutatula. So hence A dot B is equal to B dot A. Okay, so now scalar product also obeys distributive law, which means uh, we can write. So, distributive law. So, we can write A dot B plus C as A dot B plus A dot C. Okay. And we can write A dot delta B is equal to delta a dot b so where delta is a real number so the proofs of the above equation are left to you you can take as an observation okay so this is the distributive law which means the scalar product of two vectors also obeys distributive law. We can write a dot b plus c as a dot b plus a dot c and a dot lambda into b as uh, we can take lambda outside and we can write a dot b. Okay. The unit vectors i, j, k we have. Isn't it? We know that the unit vectors i, j, k. So, we know the unit vectors i, j, k. So, what is the dot product of all these? Yes, the dot product of i dot i is equal to the dot product of j cap dot j cap that is equal to k cap dot k cap. Okay. Which gives the result as unity and if you consider the dot product of two different unit vectors like i dot j that is equal to j dot k and that is equal to k dot i in this case the product of these two different unit vectors will be always equal to 0. Okay. So, we can consider two vectors A and B. Where A is equal to Ax into I cap plus Ay into J cap plus a z into k cap okay and b is equal to bx into i cap plus by into j cap plus b z into k cap so, if you consider these two vectors and the scalar product of these two will be A dot B. Okay. That is equal to Ax into I cap plus Ay into J cap plus Az into K cap which is multiplied with bx into i cap, by into j cap and bz into k cap. So, we know i dot i is 1. 
but i dot j is zero so in the first case ax into bx isn't it so this is i dot i in this case it is one whereas ax into b by that case it is again i dot i cap dot j cap that is zero and ax into bz and i cap dot a cap that is also zero so the product we'll get ax bx a y b by plus a z b z okay and uh, the we can write it as a square is equal to a x square plus a y square plus a z square if we consider both as a vector a okay b is also equal to a in that case this is the thing and we already know a dot a we can write it as uh, the dot product of uh, two vectors here as i told you we are considering only the same vectors so a dot a we can write it as magnitude of a again magnitude of a into cos 0 so cos 0 is how much is 1 so a dot a will be is equal to a square that is the first case and in another case you should remember a dot b will be 0 if a and b are perpendicular okay if a and b are perpendicular then a dot b will be 0 